Alright, hey guys, today I'm doing a new tutorial and I'll be showing you how to get this effect right here. I'm going to preview through it so you get a better idea of what we're trying to do. Um, basically, it's this sort of see-through effect on the character's face and you can see gears and veins and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool effect and it looks really nice. Uh, I just wanted to say that I know there is another video on this, but this video is going to be for AMV editors and it's going to be how can we get this effect on an anime character and make it look really nice. So I think I've shown you the effect enough. I think we can start the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a new composition. And I'm just going to call this our effect comp. It's set to 1280-720, which is just what I normally set it to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the clip and move that over here. So this is the clip that the effect is going to be going on. Let me just get rid of the masks and all the effects on it. Alright, so this is the basic clip that I started out with. I just wanted to say that before it was really choppy and really difficult to use. So what I ended up doing was I actually added Twixter to this to um, slow it down and make it look nicer. And you can see there's hardly any warp in this and it looks pretty nice. So if you want to learn how to do Twixter like this, I have a video already so I'll link that in the description. But anyway, this is the clip. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a mask path around the character's face. So I do have the mask already set up so I'm not going to spend too much time. But I'll do the first couple ones so you guys get a better idea of um, how you should do this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in um, using the pen tool right here. I'm just going to quickly outline this character's face. And we just want the area that we may want the effect to uh, appear on. Oops. So again, it just has to be a very basic mask. It doesn't have to be anything too precise. And this is perfect. We just want this general area where the effect should be. Um, next, we're going to go down. We're going to open up our mask and then keyframe the mask path right there. So this part is pretty simple. All we're going to do is just hit the next. And we see the character's head moved slightly to the left. So I'm just going to double click on the mask and slide it over slightly to the left. And now I'm going to hit the next button. We see, okay, our head moved a little bit more to the left. So one more time, I'm going to double click and slide it over to the left. So you get the general idea. Don't spend too much time on this because we just want the general area of the effect. Um, anyway, I already have it set up, so I won't spend too much time working on this. Let me just put the mask back in. So as you can see it's a very basic mask and even if I am to preview through this you can see that it's jumping around and it's not perfect but again we just want the general area where the effect should be. So once you have that set up this should be set to none actually. Um, anyway so once you have the mask set up and cut out like this, we're going to move on to the next part. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new solid. So go up to Layer, open up New, and hit Solid right there. This solid we're going to create should be black. And just like that, we've created the solid. Um, we're going to go down into our mask and our mask path. Make sure all your keyframes are highlighted and hit Control c and we're just going to move all of our mask points back up into here. So um, we're going to hit Control V and paste it like that. So as you can see when you preview through this, um, this is where the effect is going to be taking place. Um, and I think this is a good point where we can just visualize where we want the effect to be. So all we're going to do here is open up the mask go into mask feather and pull that up a little bit and we just want it to blend in a little nicer um, once we're done with that just open up your effects and presets we're gonna find fractal noise 
and we're going to drag and drop that into our solid. So at this part you can set this up however you want. Um, Turbulent Basic is pretty cool with the uh, gear background because we have this sort of techno technological background sort of look. But again you can set this up however you want. Um, we just want some dark and light spots and a little bit of uh, uh, cool background. So I'm going to set it to dynamic for now. Um, maybe play around with the evolution a little bit so we get some nice dark areas. And then I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit. So that looks pretty good for now. I'm going to leave fractal noise. Um, and now we're going to move to probably the most fun part of this tutorial. And we're going to be playing around with the gears and the veins. So let me quickly drag these into the comp. I just wanted to say that in the description of the video, I can add these images if you want them. Um, it'll probably be a little bit easier to follow along with the tutorial. Anyway, I'm just going to scale them down first. And I'm going to set both of them to multiply. Don't worry if it affects anything in the background because it's going to be changed later. I'm going to start with the veins because they're going to be in the background. Um, all I'm going to do is just drag them and then maybe position them like this. This looks pretty good. Then I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, open up scale with S, Shift P, and Shift R to open position and rotation. Um, then we're just going to position this out and up. Then maybe rotate it a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Anyway, you can set this up however you want. Um, now I'm just going to move over to the black ears. So I'm going to hit Shift P and Shift R to open up these. Oops. Let me position this down just a little bit. Um, this looks pretty good. I just wanted to say that if you see the area where the mask is, we want to go slightly over this area because um, just in case we want to move stuff around later um, and we want to work with this later, just make sure that all these veins and gears and stuff will go outside of the mask. Give us a little bit of uh, extra space to work with. So I'm just going to scale these down a little bit. And I'm actually going to grab one more gears, I think. Um, these ones I'll pull up. And I'll flip them around. Oops. Scale them down and then drag them over. Now let me just zoom in a little bit. They're a little bit crowded here. Pull this up. Stuck in position. All right, that looks pretty good for now. Um, once you have this all set up, just grab all of the images. So I'm going to grab all four of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to pre-compose them. So I'm going to hit pre-compose right here. And then we're going to move them all into a new composition like that. So once that's set up, right click on the new composition, scroll up and hit open composition. So once we're in this composition, just create a new layer. Oh, my bad. I want to create a new layer. It's going to be a solid and we're going to set this to white. All right, that looks pretty good. Drag it to the bottom. And right now is the time if you want to add any blurs or anything like that. So I think I will add a couple. Let me just grab this and scroll down. Fast blur is more than good enough. Um, right now we just want to add a little bit of depth to the effect. So, oops. Let's 
So I'm just going to set it up like this. Maybe I'll set this to 3. And then the smaller gears at the top, I'll blur just a little bit. Alright, that looks pretty good for now. Um, we can always come back if we want to change it later. But I'm going to jump back into our effect composition. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a Luma mat. So you can already see, okay, well, we have the gears and we have this background. It looks pretty cool. looks pretty cool right now. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab the black solid and pre-composition. We're going to right click and we're going to pre-compose both of these. And all we're doing is we're just going to compress um, the whole entire effect into this one composition. This composition contains the mask and everything in it so far. So once this is set up like this, we're going to go into here and we're going to change this to add. Just like that, we can see, well, we kind of have that reddish tinge to it. Um, what we want to do is we want to show that off a little bit more. So I'm going to add curves. First, I'll set this to red and I'll pull this up. And we see we have the red color in there and then we go to the blue. I'll pull this down. Now we have the orange. And then we go into the green. Then we put little points at those three areas and then pull it down here. And up here. So here we have the orangish, orangish color, which looks pretty nice. And you can always play around with this if you want different colors. So maybe if I wanted a little bit more red. This looks pretty good for now. It looks pretty nice. Um, if I preview through, we can take a look. Alright, so it looks pretty good, but I think we're missing some movement in this effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our pre-comp, this pre-comp over here. Oops. I'm going to jump into this composition, actually. So I'm going to right-click this, go into Open Composition. And over here, we have our black solid with the fractal noise. So right now, the fractal noise, it's just sitting there. It's not causing any changes of color um, it's really static so what we're going to do is I'm going to go into transform and I'm going to keyframe offset turbulence right here so hit U on your keyboard to open up our keyframes and I'm going to pull this all the way down here we're going to set another keyframe for turbulent offset and then we're just going to pull this over I want to pull it over this way actually so this is going to give us a little bit of movement in the background. So we see that it's starting to sweep to the left side, which is pretty cool. It gives us some movement and should give us a little bit of change in color. Let me hop back into here. So now we can see the color sweeps at the same direction as the face. Which looks pretty good, but we can make this look even better. So what we can do to make this look even nicer is go into our composition with all of our images. Just select all of them. So what I did was I grabbed the first one. I hit shift and clicked on the last one that I wanted to highlight. And then hit P for position. So we're going to keyframe this. I'm going to pull this to the end and then I'm just going to slightly pull all of these to the right just to grab a little bit of movement there. And this is the reason that we had added a little bit space earlier in the tutorial. Um, it gives us a little bit of sort of leeway. Um, it lets us move it around a little bit now. So we have that movement there and it's gonna look even better in the effect. The final thing we need to do to sell this, to completely sell this effect is maybe throw in some color correction, so I'm going to throw in looks.
and just gonna give this a moment to load So once this has loaded, we can see, oops, one second, oops, my bad. Okay, so when we're going to add looks, we're not going to add it to this composition because, again, this composition is just the effect. We want to add looks to the whole entire thing. So let me just create an adjustment layer. Sorry about that. So I'm going to throw looks in there. I'm going to hit edit and throw on some dark. Let me scroll down a little bit. This one looks pretty good. I'm going to throw on a little bit of a dark color correction. And then the final thing I might do is maybe add some chromatic aberration, which is a red giant plugin that looks pretty cool. It gives us this sort of warping effect here. Pull down the master distortion. Um, and I think we've got the effect down. I'm going to preview through really quickly. We're just going to give that a moment to preview through. I just wanted to say that if you wanted to make it, the effect look a little bit softer, you can always add a blur to our pre-comp 14 or the pre-composition that holds the, the whole cheek effect. And other than that, I think we have the effect down pretty well. So this is how you create the effect. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any other questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments. And one more time, if you have any other ideas for tutorials that I can do or any other videos, um, also leave those in the comments and I'll check them out. And yeah, thanks for watching.